There are two basic ways to assess a woman's ovarian reserve. There's ultrasound that allows us to look at the ovaries and actually measure the ovaries, do what we call an antral follicle count, so we can look at and measure the number of small immature follicles within the ovary. And then there's hormonal ovarian reserve testing. And what I'd like to do during this presentation is focus on hormonal ovarian reserve testing. This is a simple, very easy to perform blood test that's done on the third day of a woman's menstrual cycle. So if the first day of heavy flow, we call that day one. On the third day of bleeding, that's, the th that's day three of their cycle. They need to go in and they need to get their blood drawn. Very simple test. And the blood needs to be sent to a reputable laboratory. There's several around the country. But the blood needs to be sent for a panel of testing that includes an FSH level, an estradiol level, and an AMH level. And using those three laboratory results together in sort of an algorithm, we can tell this woman whether her ovarian reserve is normal or diminished for her ovarian age. The question that always arises is who should be tested and when should they be tested and how often should they be tested? And there's really no right answer for this. There's no consensus. At Texas Fertility Center and at Ovation, what we tend to recommend is that all women who are 35 years of age or older who are not yet ready to pursue childbearing should really consider getting their ovarian reserve assessed annually. So in other words, at least once a year. Women who are younger, who aren't necessarily ready, should maybe have their test uh, performed maybe 25 to 30 years of age. Maybe they do it once. Maybe between 30 and 35, they test it again. Hopefully by age 35, they're certainly ready to attempt conception because we know that pregnancy rates fall significantly after the age of 35. Miscarriage rates can commonly rise significantly after the age of 35. And even though 35 is not the magical age, it's really a pretty good milestone that people really should be focused on. If a woman's not yet ready to pursue childbearing, she should at least discuss with her mother how old she was when she went through menopause. If a woman was in her 50s when she went through menopause, she can pretty much rest assured that she should go through menopause in a pretty much of a normal time frame. On the other hand, if a woman's mother was in her early 40s, maybe even late 30s, that woman needs to understand that her risk of going through menopause early and having premature ovarian failure is significantly elevated. We would therefore counsel that patient that she should get her ovarian reserve tested much more frequently and at a much earlier age. So if a woman goes through ovarian reserve testing and we find out that her ovarian reserve is already diminishing, in the old days there wasn't much that we could do. But nowadays there are multiple options that we have to offer. We can offer embryo freezing or vitrification. So if that woman has a partner, we can go ahead and stimulate her ovaries, get her eggs out, fertilize those eggs with her partner's sperm, and freeze those embryos for transfer at a later date even maybe several years later. And what that does is that locks in her chance for pregnancy at the age that she was when her eggs were retrieved. The other option is egg freezing, what we call oocyte vitrification. Same basic process, we stimulate a woman's ovaries, we get her eggs out, and then we freeze those eggs without ever exposing them to sperm. And we know that nowadays we've got excellent pregnancy rates with the use of frozen eggs, so we can therefore afford that patient a significantly li greater likelihood of being able to achieve a pregnancy even when she's early 40s because her eggs may have been frozen when she was in her middle 30s.